Okay. What he basically your life and fear and you don't go out and enjoy your life and you don't have the shirt on. You know, and I thank you for just walking the circle. Thank you for watching the video. I'm super excited. Because I'm about to see my mentor. He's here in Lisbon for 24 hours. He came for uh, audiovisual businesses. And uh, it's been a long time that I didn't see him. And it's always a pleasure to see the person who I owe everything. So. En fait, il a fait l'ascenseur comme euh, il a yeah. fait l'ascenseur. Yeah. Shogun, the one and only. Merci. Je sais pas comment ça marche. Tu vois, il y a un truc là, regarde. So. Je pense que c'est ça, tu vois. Tu connais pas la rue Rose The Pink Street. J'ai un Sony que j'avais mis dans mes gars série. C'est lequel Quel modèle Je m'en sers pas tellement. Évidemment. Maintenant qu'il y a. Voilà. Les marchands à Lisbonne. Avec le Shogun. One and only. C'est quoi ça, Bershka C'est pas un truc. Bershka, c'est une marque de Zara. Voilà mon prochain achat, c'est ça. Ça Sérieux En plus, ça coûte pas cher. Déjà, il y a des trucs chinois, ça coûte pas cher. Mais qu'est-ce que tu vas faire là-dessus Ouais. On va les crapailler en forêt. Oh putain. Ouais. Ouais. Putain, celui de New York, énorme avec Stéphanie Ental. En tuc tuc tu vas partout. D'accord, tu l'as gardé toute la matinée en fait. Ouais, mais pas au talent. CR7. On passe par là J'ai appelé mon Uber. So, we were in the West Indies, we are 96. And um, we recorded. Uh, uh, French Guiana. This is in South America. This is a French territory. We met this guy, half Guyanese, half Chinese. We directly started respecting him a lot. So we went to a studio called uh, 3S Studio, 3S, and uh, we recorded a project called Preview there. And uh, that's how we met him. Kept going back and forth. Uh, so I was working with uh, Jean-Michel Rotin back, back then, uh, being a backup dancer and uh, a rapper in his shows. And we also had a song that was uh, performing crazy called uh, Tour. And uh, we here, you know, uh, chilling and uh, doing a lot of shows in Cayenne and all around Guyane and going back and forth between uh, Cayenne, Fort de France and Pointe-à-Pitre. So uh, Cayenne is, is Guyane, South America. Pointe-à-Pitre is uh, Guadeloupe, French island. The other name is Carouquera. And uh, Fort de France is uh, Martinique. So you know, we're here going back and forth for months. I think we stay like four or five months going there. Uh, then I go. Then I go back to France. Then we return to Guadeloupe uh, to start recording again. The situation was a little frustrating back then. We we were there. We, we didn't know exactly where we, we were doing there. The things were a little slow. We, you know, um, yeah, crazy times. And uh, one day, uh, Shogun, back then my future mentor, 
uh, visitors in Guadeloupe. So he comes, he sees us, he sees what we're working on. So everybody was working on their little project. I was working on preview project, but it was going very slow. And at the same time, I, I was starting to to make some beats for my album, um, influenced by uh, the hip hop that I came from, and at the same time staying six months in the West Indies, uh, South American influence. So, was, so I showed him the few beats and a few of the things that I was doing. And that's when he planted the seed, the inception. That's when he said the first phrase uh, that would make him my mentor. He told me, so what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm waiting for this guy and this guy to do this, and da, 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 so I can do this, da, da, da. And he replied to me, a leader doesn't follow other people. Whoa. Back then, I really had no, not enough consideration for myself to dare call myself a leader. So the phrase hit me. And uh, he told me, so what have you been doing the last month? And I said, nothing really. I've been here waiting for things to happen. And he told me, listen, do you have your plane ticket? I say, yes. Uh, is it uh, is it an open plane ticket? I say, yeah. He said, okay. If you go back to Paris and you call me, you get your computers, you get your lyrics, you get your all your gear, your sampler, whatever, and uh, I'll book your ticket to come to Cayenne and work on your project. And I was like, yeah, really? And they were like, yeah, seriously. And uh, so this is something about my life. When opportunity comes, it's a door that opens and you have two choices. You go inside or you watch the door close itself because you waited too much. And actually, I'm the type of guy who can think of possibilities and possibilities of possibilities and trajectories and the, the millions of different effects of one choice in one second and say, yeah, I'll do it. If I hesitate, usually it's because I'm not going to do something because I don't see a good issue. So by the time he told me this, I said, okay. I think the next afternoon I went to the airport and I said, when is the next flight to Paris? And the girl at the counter told me there's a flight tonight. That you can take i said okay reserve my seat went back to to point a pitre gather all my stuff pack my suitcase and whoosh, left to paris i arrive in paris and i'm asking myself was this guy for real okay i go to my house i see my mom long time no see been six months away blah blah blah, blah. how you doing my son i'm good blah 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 blah, blah. um Put all my clothes to the laundry, uh, get some new stuff, prepare all my gear. And then I go to the Air France agency and ask the woman at the counter, good morning, do you have a, a flight under my name? She looks up in her files and she says, yeah, yeah, I have an open flight to go in two days to Cayenne and return is open. And that's how... I spent the next year in South America. Once I arrived, he gave me the key to his house, one car, <laughs> and uh, he told me, so this is where I work, you're gonna stay in my office, and you're gonna write your songs and do your beats. You're gonna do your home studio there. And uh, once you're ready to record, we're gonna go to Studio 3S, and we're gonna start recording. And uh, that's how I started recording, very hip hop, with a little bit of of Brazilian vibes and stuff, but not no. I did uh, 15 songs, so very hip hop, with my own vibe and stuff. And uh, the first night, he's listening to my first two songs. So he's here. We at we at his house, and uh, so he has three spliffs. He picks the first one, and we start listening to my two songs. Once he's done listening to the songs, looks at me straight in the eye and say, this is crap, bullshit. 
you can do so much better than that. You ain't worth nothing. Taking it easy, uh, you think you're so good that, yeah, you don't have to work. And this was a slap in my face. I was like, what? Who do you think you are to tell me blah, 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 blah? And I was like, listen, I know you can do better. Tomorrow, you're going back to the studio and you're going to record me something. And this happened like this for three, four days where every day I would bring new songs, new rap songs, and the guy was always like with his joint telling me, what the fuck is this? Is this what you came here for? And at a point, I start being depressed. At the last night, I even heard like, I even start tearing up and telling him, I don't understand why you call me to come here to record my project, and now that I'm doing my project, you keep bashing on my, my art. And everybody at home is telling me that I'm the best, blah, 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 and you're here telling me that I am worth shit. And uh, the next day, uh, he told me, yeah, go to sleep. Tomorrow we talk. The next day we wake up, so I'm getting ready to, to, go, to, to go with him uh, to, to his office so I can start working, and he's like, no, no, no. You're staying home today. And I, yeah, why? It's like, come with me. So we go in his house, and there was a, a room that I, I didn't even see in the house. We go inside his room. It was like a, a, an office with walls and walls and walls and walls of CDs. He picked a few CDs, and these CDs, I still listen to them to this day. Music from Gal Costa, Brazilian extraordinary artist, Flavio Venturini, Stevie Wonder, Public Enemy. What else did he take? Carlinos Brown, Wyclef Jean, newest album that just came out, that was Carnival. Fuji's, a little bit of hip hop, a little bit of soul, a little bit of Brazilian music, a little bit of Caribbean music too. He tells me, today, you're gonna stay in here and you're gonna listen to all these CDs, all of them from the beginning to the end. And I was like, why you want me to listen to this? This is, shut up and listen. Then he left. So I put the first CD on and uh, I got blew away. I got blew away by the art. I got blew away by how much this was opening my own mind. He really knew what he was doing. Actually, he was in front of, I don't want to abuse, but a front of a genius that didn't even know his own abilities and all he needed to do was open my own mind, make me travel through music to understand what was my mission in music, make people travel too. And I don't know how he knew that I had it in me, not be stuck to one genre of music, which was hip hop, but completely open myself to the the metissage, the mixing of the mixture of all these different genres and not create my own style by following genres but by having my own color and applying it to any genre but be able to take hip hop, mix it with Brazilian music, take Zouk mixing, mix it with hip hop, take Caribbean convergent sound, mix them with R&B which would be my style of today. And uh, when he came back home, we didn't talk. We just watched TV and we chilled. And uh, the next day I went to the studio and uh, I recorded one of my, my first hits, my first classic songs that blew up in 98, which was uh, Telephone. And uh, I remember the, the first night that we, so we, we had our ritual. So we sat down and uh, he's like, okay, let me listen to what you did today. And I played in telephone. And uh, it was you smoking. Then um, it took a second one. He replayed the song. And he was like, 
you're starting to understand your own abilities. For the first time, my frustration went away. And I understood why I was there and why he chose me. Uh, he saw something in me that I didn't even know I had. And that's how he became my mentor, my second dad, and uh, the reason behind like all this success. He really not only opened me the door to recording something, because I could have done it anywhere, but he really opened the door of my soul to music. And I love him for that. 